Hi, we are going to take a look today at the activity Analyzing Piecewise Functions. This is a fantastic activity to do within the area unit because it calls on students to remember their knowledge of basic area formulas for area of a circle, triangle, trapezoid, rectangle, and it also allows them to spiral back in and apply the information that they learned in the transformations units regarding reflections and um, translations up and down to, in order to combine the two so that you have a greater concept of how you can determine things like, such as area without having to actually calculate it but using a foundation of transformations in order to determine those things. So let's take a look at what our graph looks like. The first thing that we need to discuss is the fact that this says y is equal to f of x. For some of your students, they may not have taken the accelerated courses in, within middle school. They may not be familiar very much with this um, notation f of x. So this may require just a small introduction, but nothing that you want to get too deep with. You can deal with this introduction using the table and the graph. So our first question that we want to talk about is, let's classify what each of these figures are. We have a semicircle, an isosceles triangle, and a trapezoid. I generally ask my students to do those first five problems. We pause, and we take a moment to review our solutions, and then we can move forward. So take a moment now, pause the video, work one through five, and when you're ready to come back, let's check and review our answers. So moving on to question number two, what is the total area enclosed by that graph and the x-axis? So if you can see, I've actually highlighted the x-axis so they can see that boundary line. I'm trying to find the area of this semicircle, the area of this triangle, and the area of this trapezoid. I like to ask my students to separate those so that they are finding the area of the semicircle, 9 pi over 2, the area of the triangle, 4, and the area of the trapezoid, five halves. To find that total area, we will add those all together. It's at this point that I have a discussion, if I have not already, about leaving things in terms of pi and how this is an exact answer, whereas if you were to take that nine and multiply by 3.14, or even the pi button on your calculator, that that is an estimation, that is rounding, and is an approximation of what the actual exact answer is. So for this worksheet, we are going to keep things in terms of exact numbers. If you have students where you need to scaffold that and allow them to use decimals, they may they do so, but it does make a little bit of the connection not seem quite as easy to observe. For question three, we are asked to find the line of symmetry if one happens to exist for each of those following intervals. So helping your students understand that this is not x is negative three and y is three, but this is an interval from negative three to three, from where x is negative three to where x is positive three. I'm looking for that line of symmetry that is going to happen here, which happens to be the equation x is equal to 0. For the next interval between 3 and 5, I have a line of symmetry here, which is the equation of the line x is equal to 4. For our remaining intervals from 5 to 9, there is no line of symmetry, and for the entire f of x graph, there is no line of symmetry. So the question four asks us, how does this line of symmetry affect the area of this shape? Because it is symmetrical, half is over here, half is over there. Same for the semicircle. It is being cut in half. So those areas are also being cut in half. Finally, for the first portion, we are asked to talk about the vertical line x is equal to k, and that that vertical line divides the entire area into between the f of x and the x-axis into two equal parts. They don't need to know exactly where it is. They just want to know what shape that happens to occur within. So if we're looking at what our areas are equal to, the area of the semicircle is 9 pi over 2, which is hard for me to understand because of the pi sometimes when I'm trying to determine what half is. So if we allow our students to go in and determine what half of that is, the total area, 9 pi over 2 plus 13 over 2, 
is approximately 20.637. The area of the semicircle is approximately 14.137. So the semicircle is already more than half of the total area. So wherever this line is, that will occur somewhere within the semicircle. The stem of this question is something that is seen very frequently within AP Calculus. You'll notice that a lot of the terminology, a lot of this notation is the connection, it's the bridge between the geometry concepts we've asked them to learn throughout the year and where we are expecting them to go. So that is our first five. That's the trunking that I typically do with my students. We'll pause, regroup, make sure that we all understand and get ready to move on to number six. So take a moment, pause your video, work six, seven, and eight, and when you're ready to come back, we will check our answers.